While I was there, we researched VR and AR, waveguides, shooting lasers into our eyes, all kinds of crazy things. Um, after looking at the entire like, spectrum of what was available, you know, of course, yeah, I started migrating towards AR because it has the biggest touch points on all ages. Um, eight to 88 is uh, what we're always saying around um, cast AR for you know, who we want to use our device. Um, as we started looking at the different technologies like waveguides um, and near eye optics like um, Fresnel lenses and, and LCDs, uh, there's a lot of issues with those. And it was a lucky accident one day um, in the lab. I was um, playing around with some retroreflectors and some projectors, and I noticed that if we have a retroreflector on the table, we can actually project from the glasses out to a surface and eliminate all of these near eye issues. And so I started exploring doing augmented reality with that. And uh, we quickly found that it was a very comfortable way to um, experience AR. You could have a massive field of view. Um, You're focusing at a distance. And so Rick and I founded our company. Uh, we showed our glasses at multiple events for many years. We did a Kickstarter recently, um, very successful. And uh, we're now shipping our developer units. Um, you can go see those downstairs. Um, we're also developing input devices, wands, tangibles. You know, our dream is to have open and free play, just like kids do. You want to take your Tonka truck, you want to drive it across the, the table and crush buildings. And so that's what we're trying to, uh, to achieve. So just to keep it short, yeah, you know, that's what we're doing right now. So any questions? So you say you're targeting eight to eight. What might a use case for an eight-year-old be? Well, we use my dad as a use case. Like, we always think, would my dad actually wear something like a, a big VR headset? Probably not, because it would cut him off from the world. But with our glasses, you can see through the lenses, and you can see to the retroreflective surface on your coffee table. For him, a NASCAR app would be pretty cool. He could watch his TV and watch the NASCAR race, but he can look down on the coffee table and see all the instrument, instrumented data coming off of his favorite car. And it's like, oh, there's a crash over there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the reason that we're focusing on tabletop experiences right now is when we were at Valve Software, we, we looked at AR and we wanted to do the, you know, walk around the world and have AR experiences everywhere. And we realized that's really, really difficult. And so we started to focus on what can we nail and make perfect. And a tabletop experience in the living room or on the um, kitchen table it's very doable. We can have tracking within that range that's submillimeter accurate. We can track tangibles on the surface. We can use wands to interact. And it's more social. You can actually see each other across the table. So, you know, if I launch some kind of fireball at your character and, and destroy your character, I can look across and see you. And just like my father and his NASCAR experience, he can still see the TV, he can still see his smartphone. And you can see the virtual NASCARs traveling around, our cars. Any other questions? Uh, so we're shipping developer kits now, and we don't have any geolocation in it. It's, it's tied to a tabletop experience. Um, we do have submillimeter accuracy on our tracking. So we can track your position clear around the table. So you could walk to any side of the table and see your AR experience.